What's up guys, here is 13 minutes of useless League of Legends information. We're mixing it up a little today. Assuming that every game takes an average of 30 minutes to complete, which is fair since the majority of players are either bronze, silver, or gold, it would roughly take you 80 hours to play at least every single champion once. This also doesn't take into account queue times, champion select, and remakes, so it's probably even longer. Have you ever wondered why Riot makes so many changes based around just China? Well, this is why. This is a graph showing the amount of accounts in each region, and as you can see, everyone pales in comparison to China. In fact, there's almost more Chinese accounts than all of the other regions combined. So yeah, it makes a little more sense on why Riot focuses a lot of their updates around their servers. I've talked about the champion most likely to AFK in the past, but I haven't mentioned the champion least likely to AFK who is Lulu, only AFK in 0.4% of games. It looks like Lulu players are officially the least tiltable players. If you're ever looking to make money while playing League or any of these other games, I highly suggest you check out a program called Buff. All Buff does this in the background after you download it, not affecting gameplay whatsoever, and it simply just lets you earn buff points over time, which you can use to buy gifts like new gaming hardware, RP gift cards, and a lot more. Now, it's not going to make you rich overnight, but if you let it chill there and play your games like normal, you'll eventually earn yourself some free RP without you even knowing it. I've personally been using buff for almost a year now. It's 100% safe to use, and it's free, so make sure to download it using my link below. Additionally, I'm personally going to randomly give five RP gift cards away, and all you have to do to enter is use my link to download buff, and then post your Twitter handle in the comments so I can contact you. And that's it. Thanks all. Now back to the video. There's a guy named Signal RGB who set up his lighting so that each channel champion spell would trigger a specific effect that matches each of their abilities. For example, Pantheon has lights matching him charging up and going off through his entire animation. This is all has a bunch of blue ripple effects. Nocturne's ultimate makes all the lights just go black. It's actually really cool, and some of it can be a little distracting, but it's still a fun idea. Did you know that there had to be two recording sessions for Ari when they were recording her voice lines because the first take was considered too sexy? You can even hear Laura Post talk about it in an interview. Did the audition, it was very, you know, um, it's too late for mercy. And that's how Ari could have sounded but they did another round when everyone was a little too sexy <laughs> We're not sure we wanted to go that far. Right. Can you do another one? Wu Cao Alistar is actually just him cross-dressing when you think about it. Samira's favorite fruit is pomegranate. Here's a list of Korean champion names according to Google Translate. My personal favorite has to be Sivir being translated into Le Fertilization. In case you didn't know, there's a new mode being added into Wild Rift called Legendary Q, which basically prevents players from playing champions without a certain amount of mastery points on them. Basically, it's to prevent people from playing ranked on champions their first timing or have little to no experience on. This not only helps prevent people who think they can play every single champion in your ranked games, but it also might even help deter some smurfs. Something they should definitely consider for normal League of Legends. Did you know that Lilia sneezes and has an animation for it right after her four stacks on her passive wears off? As soon as the fourth stack ends, Lilia will sneeze. This only happens when she's at her fourth stack as well. It doesn't work for any of the other ones. Did you know that five years ago, the OCE server used to turn off ranked mode during 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. due to lack of players? This was mainly because queue times for a lot of players were 30 minutes to an hour during this time due to the low numbers of people on the server. Still, people were pretty frustrated with this and justifiably so because instead of waiting 30 minutes for a game, players were now forced to wait three hours no matter what. On top of that, they disabled flex queue between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Luckily, this was eventually changed and they reopened up ranked queue to be available 24-7. Additionally, when the Twisted Tree Line game mode was still around, the OCE server actually had a weekly schedule on when you could play norms and ranked in it. Normal Twisted Tree Line was on Tuesday and Wednesday, and ranked was on Thursday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. To me, the schedule just seems so random for even a small server, but I guess it's over now, so who cares? Belveth was originally going to have an ability that allowed her to create a permanent long-range portal across the map, kind of like Hextech portals are today. In case you didn't know, Turkey and Russia have their own League of Legends servers, but everyone in that area would just play on the EUW or EUNE server because it was bigger. However, a couple of years ago in 2017, both Turkey and the Russian servers were so desperate to get more players that they made it so you could transfer to them for just one RP. And for perspective, it was normally 2600 RP at the time to transfer servers. On top of the ability to transfer for free, the Russian servers would also offer free chests and keys for just playing. And these wouldn't be just chests every so often like most servers. Instead, you could earn over 300 chests annually for just participating in the events. This is just your daily reminder that I'm a cutie pie named his cat small cat yeah this is what Nar looked like during development. Basically, he was a tiny Nautilus who had Syndra's autos, Sivir's boomerang, Vayne's bolts for the three hit ability, Zig's satchel charge, and Master Yi's Highlander speed lines. Then for Meganar, he turned into Warwick with an added boulder throwing animation. Meganar also had Tristana's rocket jump and Udyr's bear stance roar. Also something interesting to point out in this video is his ult. His ultimate was a devour ability that let you devour other champions that was later put onto Tom Kench. Wright didn't add it onto Nar because they thought it should be the core to a champion's kit instead of a 
secondary feature. Overall, it's pretty cool to see where the champion started during development compared to where he ended up today. Also, lastly, during this development phase, he was called Yordle Hulk. If you're enjoying, don't forget to poke that sub button and here's your puppy. Thanks. I've talked about this briefly in the past, but in 2016, Riot did an exclusive event for the OCE server called Ocean Week, where the overall goal was to unlock a vote to select a League of Legends champion to be fashioned into a real statue. That statue would then be sunk to the bottom of the ocean as an artificial reef. Basically, there were 12 Ocean Week champions on free rotation, and each time you won a game using those champions, you'd get a point that you get to use in deciding which champion you'd want to vote for. Then, anyone who got three points before the event was over got their summoner name recorded on the reef. In the end, as you can see, Nautilus was the victor, and you can see all the summoner names on it as well. On top of all that, it also kind of shows how small the OCE server really is. In 2019, the LEC partnered with Pringles, saying that there would be 115 million cans across Europe that could potentially win you a legacy skin of Zed, Riven, Ferris, Alistar, or Nidalee. Each can had a code where you could enter a ticket into a raffle for that day, and every day, two winners would be chosen. In other words, out of the 115 million cans, only 82 of them actually had a winning code. Woo. At that point, it might just be better to buy a lottery ticket, and that way, if you win, you'll actually earn some money. Did you know that in 2014, there used to be a League of Legends themed restaurant in China called Demacia? The restaurant wasn't owned by Riot, but rather a fan and someone who just really wanted to see the idea come to life. Staff would dress as League of Legends characters, and the restaurant would serve League of Legends foods and drinks. There was also a lot of League of Legends decor around the inside, like statues, and it even had computers where you could play League. It was estimated that $160,000 was invested into the restaurant. Some of the dishes you could order there was deep fried Skarner, some cooked ergot, or if that doesn't fancy you, perhaps some of Renekton's thighs would do the trick. Crazy enough, another League of Legends themed restaurant popped up in 2016 called Challenger. This was also in China. Walking straight in, you'd find a five foot Ezreal statue followed by a massive Garen statue. After you admire the decor, you can check out the specials or you can order yourself some Alistar steak, fried Velkaz, some Zac pudding, or some gangplank fries. And if that doesn't do it for you, there's always breast of the Azir, some hot of Malphite, some weird Annie dish, or some of Brand's delicious custard. You know, you could say this was the only acceptable place to feed in League of Legends, or you could also not say it, that's probably better. Speaking of restaurants, in 2014, there was actually a sushi restaurant that offered free meals for challenger players and different discounts for players depending on their rank. Gold players would get 10% off, flat players would get 20% off, diamond 30% off, and challengers would eat for free. It was a limited time deal that only lasted a month, but it was still pretty cool. Also, in case you were wondering, for all you low elo players out there, they'd eventually give smaller discounts to bronze and silver players too. This person built Piltover and Zahn out of Legos and even made sure to add in a Lego version of some of the characters like Jinx or Vi. Plus, if you look really carefully, you can see a lot of the other ones too. In 2016, there was a real League of Legends themed wedding that took place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Tico Convention. As you can see, everyone was dressed up as League of Legends characters, the bride was Cass, and the groom was Talon. Even Timo was there. Here's some of the footage from the wedding and the speech. Through quickness and slowed conditions, through polymorph and curses, through victories and defeat. Did you know that every champion is secretly Rammus? If you don't believe me, here's a sneak peek into Rammus' universe. It really is a beautiful thing. There was a Twitch stream a while back where Enemy was playing in the background and chat was doing a really good job of singing and it was actually extremely entertaining. Unfortunately, I can't show the whole thing due to copyright purposes, but I'll leave a link in the description so feel free to check it out if you'd like. I will say my favorite part has to be them saying, oh the misery with the emote though. A couple of months ago, the LDL adopted Fearless Mode for best of three matches. Basically, Fearless Mode means that all the champions picked by your team in previous games will not be available for picking in following games. Honestly, this is a freaking fantastic idea. Seeing everyone on the pro stage play the same five champions for five games straight can feel a bit stale. So this makes things so much more entertaining. In the We're Good Over Here Challenge, Kled is listed as a poke champion alongside champions like Karma, Lux, and Ash. Alkai's actually in there too, but I suppose it makes a little more sense with his E. Still interesting. This is footage from the League of Legends client concept from six years ago, and you can see how similar it is to the one we have today. With that being said, somehow the animations in this are actually smoother than the current one. Like, why does the concept from years ago look cleaner than the one we use today. Kind of dumb, honestly. In 2013, I ran banned almost every female League of Legends character from being played at the World Cyber Games Festival. The event had to get approved from their government, and these were the official rules and limitations that the government set. These were the 36 female champions banned, and some of the other female champions barely slipped by, like Diana, Fiora, and Kale. Some even being only allowed with just their default skin. There was an idea tested where you could move on Aatrox during his queue, but they found it to be way too easy to land. So to compromise, they made it 
it so you can use his E to adjust instead. In 2011, Riot gave 450 RP to players above level 6 who had never been banned in the last two months. In other words, they were being rewarded for being normal human beings. That's when you know League of Legends is bad. This person drew every single League of Legends champion from memory in a single sitting and it's absolutely insane. I have no idea how someone can draw this well and not have a reference while doing it. Pretty amazing stuff. Zeri hasn't even been out a year and she's already gotten 37 pentakills in pro play. For perspective, that's double the amount of pentakills Kaisa was able to get in the same amount of time. She's currently smashing everyone with 139. Early in development, Bard could decide what color of meeps he got once he gathered enough chimes. Each color of the meep buffed Bard's spells instead of modifying auto attacks and they'd follow him around to show enemies which of Bard's skills Bard had upgraded. However, it was eventually scrapped in favor of buffing auto attacks to increase clarity. Additionally, Bard's meeps were originally inspired by Pikmin, and a line of them would follow Bard around constantly. Something they realized though that was by changing a single line of code, they could create a really interesting effect as seen here. They also mentioned how they would never officially add it into the game just because there would be too much going on the screen, but it was still cool to see. Honestly, it's like Bard has his own little cult here. It'd be pretty hilarious to play against this in a real game. Did you know that the honor level is affected more depending on which game mode you're playing? Ranked solo queue and flex queue impacts your honor level more than normals, ARAM, or event modes. In normals, ARAM, and event modes impact your honor level more than co-op in AI. In other words, if you're looking to gain honor level as fast as you can, it may be time to take up ranked ones again. Good luck, summoner. Let's crank has a crazy obsession for poros and for protecting them. Did you know that League of Legends Korea was selling body pillows during the Star Guardian event? I will say I'm mostly disappointed that there's no Star Guardian Urgot. Huge missed opportunity here. Jin's stage name was Kata, and it was actually at one point a candidate for the champion's name itself. So we almost had Kata instead of Jin with Jin as the stage name. Also, according to the lore, he's around 38 to 39 years old. In case you haven't heard, Riot is officially giving out a Malzahar skin for reaching different honor levels. Additionally, Riot also mentioned that they'd be working on an update that will evaluate text live in game. So eventually people will be muted right after they say something in the same very game. <laughs> in the very same game. There we go. There's also a new feature coming with the ability to report people in game as soon as things happen. And on top of all that, they mentioned working on improving the ability to create parties with people you've honored or have honored you, which is kind of interesting. I'm not sure how well this will work, but I'm curious to find out. This guy figured out how to add in custom emotes in League of Legends. And I have to say, this is a very dangerous power for the League of Legends community to have. Luckily, I can't imagine other people could actually see them anyways, but still kind of sketchy. According to the lore, Amumu is at least 6,000 years old. One of the spells tested with Nunu was giving them a climbing rope in order to lasso champions. Then after they were caught, the champions could only move a certain distance away from Nunu. Pike originally had two weapons, a sickle and a harpoon, but the sickle was removed in order to simplify the champion and avoid confusing players into thinking he had a hook spell. Ironically, and of course as we know, he got a hook spell. So he could have kept the sickle the whole time. Rest in peace, Pike sickle. Also, Pike's favorite food is salted pork and his favorite beverage is red wine cut with salt water. Riven actually used to have mana during the very early stages of the game. In the lore, Yasuo was the one to give Talia the nickname Little Sparrow. It was confirmed by Riot that the new Udir will not be available for choosing at Worlds. Honestly, this is pretty shocking considering Worlds is still a ways out. Kinda dumb. During the Prime League Second Division Finals in Game 5, NNO's top laner admitted to Googling best counter picks for his matchup. And if you're wondering if they won, yes, they did win. Uh, Yorick, Yorick is good into Olaf. Stimm an Yorick. The Spirit Guard Udir skin still has the old Spirit Guard Udir animation if you hover over it in the collection tab. Horn's release date was on October 23rd, 2017, which means it's almost been five years since we received a new tank champion in League of Legends. Sure, we've gotten some bruisers, but no real tanks like Orn. This is the craziest, totally calculated minion headbutt ever. Alistar perfectly slapped the minion right into the saver to creep walker so she couldn't move. I got a feeling she's gonna need a new keyboard after that. A huge shout out to my tier three patrons, Stefan, Noctek, and James, and a ginormous shout out to Dr. Bronze for being a tier four patron. And thank you so freaking much to all my other incredible patrons as well. All right, bye.